Hi students, as part of our source-based case study skills, okay, in this video, we are going to learn how to do surprise kill. First and foremost, what does surprise mean? Okay, anything that is surprising is something that is unexpected or astonishing. In other words, it causes you to feel an emotion such as shock. I'm going to use a simple idea of birthday parties here to explain to you how surprise skill works. Okay, imagine you're walking uh, into your house and suddenly people start singing happy birthday to you very loudly. There are two ways you're going to respond to that, right? Number one, you're going to be surprised and therefore maybe you're going to be very happy. Or number two, you're not going to be surprised and maybe your emotion will be slightly different. Why do you think you will be surprised? It's probably because you did not expect it. So when something happens to you and you don't expect it, you feel surprised, right? Okay, but on the contrary, when are you not surprised? If somehow information about the birthday party got leaked and therefore you already knew about it, in that case, you are not surprised. So, whether you are surprised or not really depends on your expectations. If you expected a birthday party to be occurring in your house, you're not going to be surprised. On the other hand, if you did not expect a birthday party to occur, you will be surprised. So you are surprised when expectation does not meet reality or not surprised when expectation meets reality. Okay, maybe I can use another example to help you through this. Say for example, you expected yourself to fail your history exam. However, when you get your exam results, you realize you got an A. Are you surprised? Yes, because expectation does not meet reality. What really happened versus what you thought would happen did not meet each other. Understand? So you are not surprised when expectation meets reality. So for example, if you thought you're going to fail and you really end up failing, you are not surprised. So let me now use a historical context to help you explain how surprise works a little bit better. Okay, what we have here is a poster. Okay, you can see Stalin on the top left-hand corner and you can see a lot of food. Okay, I hope you can associate what policy this is about. You see a lot of food, right? Okay, so it actually links to collectivization. Now, having seen this picture, are you surprised? Okay, whether you say surprise or not surprise, both answers are valid. So now we're going to think, okay, if you say you're surprised, why? Some of you might say I'm surprised because collectivization wasn't really a success. There were a lot of people starving. Okay, but some might say I'm not surprised because it's a state-sponsored picture. If you know who the author is in the provenance, it will help you out, right? Okay, so let's go into how we write it in answer format. Okay. I'm going to go straight into CK or CR and then at the highest level or most commonly the highest level, I'll go to purpose. So one way you can start with is by saying, for example, I am surprised by source A as it is challenged by my contextual knowledge. Okay, and then I say source A claims, benefited, blah, 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 blah. However, according to my contextual knowledge, Stalin's collectivization did not benefit the people and then I give details. Okay, for example, a lot of Kulaks burned their crops, they did not have food, most of the food was being uh, traded away, sold away, and not given to the people. But there's one thing I want you to take note of, okay, common criteria is very important. As long as you do a cross-reference, your common criteria must be present. And in which case, both your inferences, okay, they must actually be an inference. It should not be an observation. Okay? If I want to do a cross-reference there, so example here, okay, I have source A, I have source B. First question, looking at these two sources, are you surprised? Yes, because source A clearly shows that collectivization benefited the people because they have a lot of food, right? On the other hand, source B shows that collectivization did not benefit the people because you can tell that there is still Soviet famine going on. One shows a lot of food and the other clearly shows that they are not getting their food. So in this case, a sample answer would look like that. 
I am surprised by source A as it is challenged by source B. Source A claims inference, evidence, explanation. However, source B claims inference, evidence, explanation. Okay, so really it's kind of doing a compare and contrast. Okay, but remember again, common criteria is important. Your common criteria must be an inference. Now, I want to try and go to the highest level. So, what would an answer like in the highest level look like? There's two tinier questions you need to answer. Okay, that is, what is my expectation and why? And how does the source meet my expectation? So, a sentence starter will be, I am not surprised by source A because it meets my expectation. Very, very, very often, the highest level is when you're able to show that you already know what the intention of the author is. Okay, think of it this way. Um, if the intention of the author is to set... Okay, imagine myself, okay? I set an extremely difficult paper and I tell you, I set an extremely difficult paper. And then when the source, the exam paper comes to you, you realise it is really extremely difficult. Are you surprised? No, right? Because it meets your expectation. You expected your teacher, your history teacher, to set a hard paper because that's the kind of person she is. And therefore, your expectation turned out true and therefore you're not surprised. Okay, take a moment to digest it in. In this source, an answer will look like that. Okay, I will start by saying, I am not surprised by source A because it meets my expectation. This yellow words over here, is me explaining my expectation. Okay, what is it that I expect and why is it that I expect that? So I start by saying, I expected the Soviets to portray collectivization as beneficial because it is a state-sponsored image and they will want to show themselves in a positive light so that the peasants will continue supporting collectivization despite the Great Famine occurring in the 1930s. Okay? So I mentioned that this is a similar to a purpose answer, right? But if you notice, it's not a full a wacko or anything like that. But do you see my elements inside? Okay, you see the first word I use, I expected the Soviets. Very clearly, I've identified my author. Okay, beneficial for the people. I've identified my audience, the peasants as well. Okay, and then I have my message, which is that collectivization is beneficial. And I also have my outcome so that the peasants will continue supporting collectivization. So I actually still have my Aweko inside, just that I don't phrase it as an Aweko answer per se. Okay? So the first part, the yellow part, I've explained my expectation. The second part, the orange part, is about what is shown in the source. How does the source meet my expectation? So I use this phrase. This is why the source portrays collectivization as beneficial, by showing how everyone is enjoying themselves with plenty of food, implying the success of collectivization. Okay, what I've done is to give a mini IEE, inference, evidence, explanation. I did not use any sentence starters per se, okay, but you can see that I have my inference, I have my evidence about the plenty of food and enjoying themselves, and I have my explanation where I say implying the success of collectivization. Therefore, since the source meets my expectation, I am not surprised. Okay, I hope this video helps you understand surprise a bit better. Okay, I'm trying to make this a short video so that you can grasp the idea instead of making it a very lengthy one. But if you have questions, feel free to ask me. Okay, that's all.